Okay, what I'm hoping to do today is this guy here, I want to turn into the support. It's going to slide over this up and down. Uh, this is my mock-up of that guy there. So these two got to fit in here. As you can see, they're quite a bit big. So my initial thoughts are this is going to be two of them. One for that side, one for this side over here is to split it in half and split it in half here, cut a bit extra, weld it back together. I don't know how well this is going to work out. I'm hoping for the best, but it is what it is. I haven't done this much surgical stuff with metal, a lot of stuff with wood, you know, cutting and pasting and everything else, but hopefully this one works out. So first, I'm going to cut this in half and only fuck up half the piece if I do mess it up. Uh, it would be smarter to do it all at one time, but I just don't know if this is going to work or not. So first, cut this guy in half, and then cut it here, cut on the back side, and then cut out a bit more to take up this space here, tack it back together, see if that works. If it does, make it decently finished, and then, see it does have slop this way which is fine with me. I may end up cutting out a channel, putting a roller bearing and having it to where I can tighten it down and it'll ride on there a bit tighter, but that's just too little to have to cut out and re-weld it back together. However, that's a lot of play there. I'll get to it and it'll be a nice little time lapse. <laughs> guys attached here you can see there's still a bit of play side to side it's got a lot of play rocking front to back not much so once this is on it really shouldn't do too much because if this that side has the same exact amount of play I really don't think it's gonna move that much I'm hoping not anyways we'll find out but I put these guys here just tacked them on for right now and I made sure front to back I put a penny in there as a spacer that's still not much space it's looking like now It'll give me at least a little breathing room so these guys don't lock up. And then whenever I do weld this, I'll make sure to uh, do a little bit here and a little bit here. Like, not just do all one side and have this pull apart. You gotta slowly work around it. But I need to redo all this work on the other side. And then eventually attach this big guy to this. Figure out exactly how I'm gonna do it. I did draw up plans, but I kind of left that part open. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. A lot of this is design, but then a lot of it is see what looks right, see what works right, and probably redo it three or four times until you get it right. All right, I'll let you guys watch the other side of this.
right, so off camera, I kind of fixed these guys. I realized I wasn't pulling up exactly perfectly and I didn't have everything aligned right. So hopefully now they're gonna allow this to move up and down, but I have noticed even if I move from the center, I need to move it from either one of these, like this side and that side at the same exact time. Like the center just doesn't work. It wants to move like that. And I also cut these guys off, you can see there. Gotta figure out exactly what I'm gonna do. I do need this to be open so I can move this guy on or off. If you see that, that guy is gonna be the wheel frame assembly that comes down that holds the bandsaw wheel. And what that's gonna do for me is allow the wheels to kind of free float and tension up or release. Now if I need to work on them, I can slide them off. And then what I hope to do is put some sort of a bracket here and here and have it just like a quick bolt on, bolt off sort of thing like that. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is create this bracket that goes on down, I guess create it four times. And then I gotta have a sliding piece in the middle. I'll show you a photo to the side to make it so that the belt can be, or the wheel can be tensioned within there. So this will bolt and kind of hold itself there and the wheel can get tensioned independently or aligned, I should say. That'd be more for alignment. So yeah. Okay, as you see here, got the first frame almost done. There'll be a piece that goes between here, and I also need to put holes through there to have it sort of tightened down. And then uh, there'll be some threaded rod that comes off of there and it backs it off, it pushes it this way, and then you tighten it down. I didn't put that bar on there yet because I'm gonna, I just wanted to see if everything would fit. If I get this to slide right, that to slide right. And then I only tack this so I can just remove those, bring those off and uh, drill holes through there and finish that out. But as a proof of concept, I think it worked pretty good. These are just barely tacked on there as well too. But yeah, these will be, so you can tighten it on down, make sure it doesn't move anymore. I'm gonna stick with half inch nuts and bolts for hopefully everything, make it nice and simple. They're a bit overkill for just tightening down but I don't want to go with something too small. I'd like to have one wrench, hopefully, to do just about everything on here. So whenever I bring this out on the field and that, it's very, very easy to work on. So I'm gonna continue on with this. I need to make four more of these for back here and over there, those two. But before I assemble them all, I'll cut all the pieces and then drill all of them out. So yeah, that's the next steps. <clears throat>
I got these guys all finished. These will slide on, slide off. Uh, and then this guy here can slide forward and back and this will slide up and down. Of course, it's not doing it easily right now. But that will give me adjustment to rock the wheel this way and bring it up, bring it down, whatever I want to do. And then uh, this whole thing will slide. Uh, not this side, this side I'm gonna try to keep as stable as possible. So there will eventually be a bar across there. I just don't know exactly what I'm gonna do yet with as far as what size wheel I'm gonna use for it. I don't wanna permanently weld on a bar and then it be in the middle of the wheel or whatever I end up using. So letting those be free floating right now. What I hope to do with all my major adjustments is over here to use this for my tensioning. Uh, Cause this side, the engine will be back here and it'll be pulling down there. Cause you want to pull your blade through the cut. You don't want to push it through. So the blade direction will be this way is, is my thought so far. That side over there, I want to have some sort of a have like a little tiny hydraulic jack right here that'll push on this member here and push down and push these guys this way to create the tension. <clears throat> and on this side, hopefully if I get it just right, once I get it right, I will put a hole through this bar here and just send these screws all the way through. However, on this side, I'll keep them loose. And once I get my tension right, then I'll tighten it up or just maybe not use it at all. I'm not really sure how that's gonna work yet. A lot of this stuff I designed, but until you get it in person and you feel it and you see how it's going to work, you really don't know. Kind of like these guys got chopped off because it came too close. I couldn't fit this guy underneath. I'll probably end up creating a, a piece that goes straight out that way and just butt weld it on there for a little stability. Guess next, I will work on the back area that is going to hold the engine and get that all where I want it to be. I haven't decided where I want the throttle to go or things like that, you know, for when you're actually um, running the machine. I think I'll use a centrifugal clutch. That seems to be the cheapest way. I would use a PTO off of a uh, little mower, but those are like a, those seem to be around like 160 bucks for a centrifugal clutch. I think I can get for like 80 or so. I just gotta make sure they're rated for everything. That's the next thing is a lot of math and just figuring out what I want because depending on your wheel size is depending on your drive pulley and then depending on what you get there, you need to work backwards and get your, or get your pulley that comes off the engine itself. Not sure which is called which, but figuring all that stuff out and figuring out the prices because these things can jump dramatically in price depending on what people recommend, what is purchased by most people, uh, what's out there secondhand. I've seen a lot of pulleys out there secondhand that are 19 inch um, to actually run the band on. Because eventually, if this goes real well, I, I'll upgrade two band wheels. Currently, I just have it, I got two inch uh, pillow block bearings because when I looked at the website that makes those uh, bandsaw wheels, they recommended from an inch and a half to two and a half inches. So I figured if I was right in the middle, that'd be best. So I got those. And then I got to figure out how I'm going to mount the wheel on that, or if I even want to go that route, or if I just want to wait and for a real pulley. Then on my lift system, I'm not sure if I made everything too tight or not. So I'm slightly holding off on that right now. <clears throat> Other people that I've seen that have made theirs, they left like almost a quarter inch of a gap. I left like an eighth to a sixteenth in either direction. So it's going to be, have to be very, very accurate whenever it's pulling up and down. I don't know if that's really worth it. Obviously, since these are going to be a friction slide, this won't get painted. This will probably just be coated in some oil and then stored underneath an enclosure or something like that. But the rest of it, I plan to paint this all red. I just did a little bit just because I thought it was kind of cool. Just see what it would look like. You get all excited when you see things kind of coming together. And then these guys are still just tacked back here because, like I said, I don't know exactly how that's going to line up. If you guys could leave some constructive feedback or like, share, definitely subscribe. Um, we're, like I've said many, many times, very small channel. So whenever you guys do that, I notice it is awesome. Uh, just seeing, you know, what I'm doing is actually worth all the time and effort. So absolutely do that. And hopefully you guys enjoy the series. Um, yeah, enjoy.